everyone, welcome to my channel, The Crafty Quinn. My name is Megan, and today I have for you some high-end spring farmhouse DIY ideas. And we're gonna be jumping right in. This is a long video and a lot to get through, so I'm just gonna be moving along quickly. This is a three wood panel sign that I got from Dollar Tree Plus, and this fresh flower market sign is also from Dollar Tree, but not Dollar Tree Plus. <laughs> so this wood panel sign I got from Dollar Tree Plus, like I mentioned, but it was about $3, and they have a similar one, I think at Hobby Lobby for maybe a couple bucks more, and I feel like you, you could probably also find this at your local Michaels. So this was the perfect background for this sign. I wanted to really make it look like a fresh flower market sign, however you would do that. But um, we're gonna start by cutting out some lavender pieces here. I think I got these from Walmart a while ago. I wanna say I got them from there. Sometimes they have some pieces that are only a dollar. I'm not sure how much they really do that anymore because I was just there recently, didn't really find much, but I think these came from Walmart. So I'm taking these seedling starter pots pods or whatever you call them from Dollar Tree, but um, they sell them every time they, they put out their garden stuff. So right now is when you can find them. This is the perfect time of year to find these at your local Dollar Tree when they're putting out all of their garden supplies. So I'm hot, as you just saw, I hot glued that to the inside of this seedling starter. And I just decided to cut out the back of this because otherwise it's just, you know, it, it sticks out too much and I need kind of a flat back to be able to secure this to the sign. I ended up actually cutting out the bottom of this completely and that was something I realized afterwards that I, I probably should have done because once I kind of combined everything together I had a, a piece from the bottom that was sticking out. So I just recommend cutting out the bottom of it completely, but you want to cut out the parts that you don't need so you can kind of make this flat. So next we're going to secure on our wood beads and that is definitely next step because we want to just stress this sign. So these, uh, these I think were the larger wood beads that I have. I have a, a couple that are different sizes and I always have a link to these down below in my description box of the video that I, I normally use them in. So check that out below if you're looking for the same wood beads that I'm using here. So like I said, we are distressing this sign and I went about this a couple different ways thinking I wanted to go a couple different directions with this, but ultimately decided to just distress the top of the sign at least. I thought I wanted to distress the wood bottom and kind of maybe leave it plain. So I like to kind of change my mind throughout the process, try out different things and see what I like better. But what's great about the stain is if you have some excess, just wipe it off with a paper towel. And then I decided to use the antique wax Waverly stain that I used to distress this sign, as you can tell, that's what I started doing. And I decided to put some on this mini pot as well. <laughs> and I thought maybe it would kind of match and also kind of look like maybe there was some dirt on it or something like that. So I thought it went along with coming from a flower market. So I changed my mind again and I used Moss by Waverly. That's the paint color for these two bottom pieces. I covered that completely in the paint and then decided to go over it with some antique Waverly wax stain like I did for the very top of this sign. And I just decided to distress over everything and also kind of make, I was trying to make the colors match. They didn't, you know, they're not an, an exact match, but it's kind of close. And once you stain it, it definitely looks like everything matches a little bit better. So I just took a chippy brush and just distressed it by waving the brush over it. But I like to take off some excess first, however I can, I'll use a paper towel or just kind of dab it in like the lid of the, of the stain and just kind of rub the brush over it gently and I don't like to use too much stain, but I like to go back and add more if I want. But that is absolutely one of my favorite parts of the process. So I decided to add wood beads to the rest of the sign as well. So I glued them all down and then decided to st distress over them as well because the beads didn't match <laughs> if, if they didn't look like the top. So um, yeah, I decided to distress them as well. So it doesn't take a lot. You can just kind of go over it a few times th with your brush. And then if you have too much, just take a paper towel or your finger like I'm doing <laughs> and just go over it gently and take off the excess you don't want. So just make sure you wash your hands, of course, afterwards, because you don't want that stain staying on your fingers and staining your fingers. Or you can also wear gloves. I also like to wear gloves when I stain stuff most times. 
So I decided to, so here's how I decided to secure at the back of these little pots. So I, because I had it cut in half and I had the bottom of it completely cut out, it made it so much easier for me to just hot glue the back piece, the black panel pieces together of this. And I have, it kind of creates more of a, a flatter back for me to actually secure it to this wood panel sign. And what's great is you don't really notice that the bottoms of these pots are cut out and they don't have bottoms, so it's fine. <laughs> you can't really see it. This is absolutely my most favorite creation from this spring season and from this video by far. So I think this came out really cute. So next, this is one of Dollar Tree's newer signs. They've had these out for a while now. So I think they should be hopefully at most Dollar Trees, but I know that they've, they come out in, in um, kind of batches and uh, they, they do have a couple other styles as well, a couple other colors. I think one might be completely white, but this is just the natural wood one. But I actually took just this flat metal tool to be able to easily take off this metal welcome sign. And so <laughs> the watering can that I have over here was maybe one direction I thought I was gonna go with this sign. Didn't like the pattern after all, after I went through the trouble of cutting it all out, but I am going to kind of, not distress this, but I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of mess up the natural wood a little bit with some white paint, just a tiny bit. I don't, I'm kind of dry brushing, but it's a small brush, so it's a little bit hard to do, but it's the only one I had available at the time, so. But otherwise I would kind of use more of like, like, a, like a chippy brush or a stencil brush to be able to do something like this, but they were not available to me at the moment. <laughs> so I kind of went towards the, um, the little corners and things like that to try and distress this. So after I did that, I kind of messed around with a lamb's ear garland and it wasn't really working out. So in the meantime, I decided to take this brand new chalk watering can craft supply piece from Dollar Tree, which is now in their garden craft supply section. So they have all kinds of wood cutouts like this. This is one of their new ones, and it's literally a chalk piece. You could write on it with, with chalk if you wanted to. But I thought it was a cute little watering can, and it cuts really easily, as I just found out. And it, has a, it had a hole in the top for an ornament, so that's why I decided to cut that piece off. But since my garland here was not working out, I cut off the leaves kind of individually and just started placing them the way I wanted to. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to improvise. So this ribbon, I just kind of put everything together in the shape of an X. And this is kind of how I just quickly do my messy bows, but I like to pick kind of my, few of my favorite pieces of ribbon that I think will match well with whatever I'm making and just kind of put everything in an X shape and cinch it with some jute twine as I just did. And then just cut off the excess pieces here with my scissors. So once you have your bow, just kind of fan it out and choose which side, the top or the bottom, you want to be the top. And then also clean up the ends of these little ribbon pieces here. Some, sometimes they come out looking like like, uh, the, like the skinnier pieces look maybe too long compared to the ones in the back, so I kind of clean those up as I go along. And then we're just going to hot glue this to the very middle of the lamb's ear. So I kind of went with some lighter color ribbon for this, so some white polka dots. Tried to think of, you know, whatever made me think of like spring is what I went with. And then I also decided to use a wood bead. I just thought it would be cute for the very middle of this bow. Since we're trying to make a higher end looking piece, especially. And then I thought it'd be cute to put this watering can on the window. And I actually liked the contrast of like the black watering can. You can clearly see it because I was looking for a pattern to go over this that would clearly stand out, but it, in my opinion, it did on its own. So that's why I decided to leave it blank after all. So here is the end result of this piece. Absolutely love it. And if you wanna check out this farmer's market sign, how I made that, check out my farmhouse video. And I will link to that as well in the description of this video down below. 
So here we are going to make a flower truck. And this idea came to me when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the watering can. And I had been flipping through this flower pattern book. And then I noticed there was a flower truck pattern. And I was like, wait a minute, I should make a flower truck. <laughs> so literally came to me right before in the, in the last craft that I just made. So I'm just using some Moss Waverly chalk paint for basically most of this truck is gonna be green, this moss color. And then I don't know what you call these. It's right above the wheels, but those, those pieces right there that sit right above the wheels, that is what we're going to paint with some plaster chalk paint, also by Waverly. It is my favorite color. Well, one of them, <laughs> besides the green, obviously. Green is my absolute favorite color. So once everything's painted on there, we're gonna move on to staining this. I love these little, I don't know, the, the railing of these trucks that they have, it just kind of reminds me of something like it, it should be like a, a wood railing on like a vintage truck. So that's why I like to stain this piece most often when I make these trucks. So it's just something that I think of, but I use makeup wipes and I use stain to do this, but you can also dilute a brown paint and just use a, a teeny tiny paintbrush if you want to go about it that way. You don't have to use the makeup wipes and the stain. So as long as you have brown paint and some water, you could basically do the exact same thing without having to buy stain. I decided to do the wheels as, as well with the stain. I don't know why, I just, I wanted to put more of like a wood grain look on this somehow and I had already painted over the pieces above the wheels so I was like let's just do it to the wheels and see how it looks out you know and then uh, I decided to also make the rest of this truck look a little bit worn and rusty <laughs> so I guess it's just kind of reminding me of like a rusty old vintage truck so these are more of those new garden craft supply wood pieces I decided to paint them individually like this with a teeny tiny paintbrush instead of just kind of making them all one color. I painted the very bottom of this with the plaster color and then the stem and the leaves are the moss color that matches the truck. My, ca my camera kept zooming in and out, I don't know why because I, I wasn't moving it, but it, I guess it just couldn't focus. But this is just some random pink acrylic paint that I found at Michael's. I don't really know the, the brand or the, or the color of this one, but pretty much if you go to the Michael's paint section, you'd be able to find this pretty easily. And then I just decided to hot glue the very bottom of this pot because I wanted it to make sure to stand, stand up enough where you could see that it's clearly a flower in a pot and maybe you would think flower truck. So if I put some hot glue on the very bottom of this and kind of lift it up as much as I could to stick out so you could clearly see what it was, then I thought it, this would work well. So I managed to fit four in the trunk of this car, the, the bed of the truck, I, I should say. Clearly I don't own a truck. <laughs> so I kind of started from the left and then decided to start from there as well so that I could kind of figure out in the middle where I wanted the last one to go. And that way I thought I'd get it more even. So it's not perfect, but you know, it, it's not gonna be perfect in a real truck anyway. So these are some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. They came out with uh, these, these rub-on transfers at the same time they came out with all this other farmhouse stuff and they had a ton of other farmhouse rub-on transfers. I've still been seeing these at my Dollar Tree. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if they restocked, I'm not sure, but I've been seeing them. So I think maybe some stores did get restocked or maybe they had, a, had them in the back and put more out, but I'm still seeing these at my local Dollar Tree. I wanna say these came out over the summer originally or the spring. Do you guys remember when these rub-on transfers first came out, if you saw them at your stores? But I'm trying to remember when they first came out with them. So I just used a Cricut tool to transfer that. So that's really all there is to it. And this truck is done. So cute. Perfect, a flower truck for spring, you guys. So moving on along here, this is a wood round. They normally have this in Dollar Tree, Crafter Square, just regular craft supplies, not any, not tied to any particular theme or anything. 
but since obviously this had a string around it, there is a gigantic hole there. So I decided to use some some glue to cover up to, I guess, fill in the hole. I didn't have um, filler or uh, or anything else that I could use for this. I'm trying to remember the, <laughs> the name of the other stuff that I normally use to fill this, but I didn't have anything other than hot glue, so I had to just make do. I ran out of some other supplies to, to fill this with. <laughs> so I used some, I used a, uh, a glue eraser to get off any excess pieces that fell out while I was gluing this, and you are gonna wanna sand it down as well. I couldn't find the footage of me sanding it down with my finger sander, but you are going to need to sand it so that it is completely flat if you do not want this hole to appear when you paint this wood piece. But before we paint this, we are gonna glue on some wood beads. These are large wood beads, and I don't have an exact count for you. I think I, I think it was something about 20, 24 or so wood round, uh, sorry, wood half beads fit on this. So I used all large ones, but I had a tiny little gap, so that's why I had to use a teeny tiny half bead for the very, you know, end of this. But both sizes, the, the tiny wood half bead and the large wood half beads, I have a link to both of those. So you should be able to find them easily if you want to check out the link in my description box. So I painted over this with plaster and I painted over this little not, I don't know why I'm calling it a candle lover, but it is a, uh, a candlestick holder. <laughs> and so, yeah. So I decided to paint over that as well. Dollar Tree loves to sell these. They came out with some other ones too, but they still sell these. I guess these are just classic and people still like them. But I, of course, love them for crafts, so I'm still buying them. <laughs> but we are distressing this with the Waverly Wax, uh, not Wax, Waverly Antique Wax Stain. So I love to use this chippy brush. It makes it so easy to catch all of the lines and detail of this candlestick holder. But yeah, so plaster chalk paint is the color that I'm using on all of these pieces here. And then I decided to distress the wood beads as well, the ones that I painted over. Gotta say, I love how the woods, the wood beads were looking after I distressed them here. So you're just gonna wanna do it all the way around and make sure it's consistent. And then I did do the top of this as well, but I was mostly focused on getting the half beads covered with the stain. This is another thing that you could also do the same thing I mentioned before, just use some brown paint. Or you could stain them all first and then paint over them and, and uh, take off some of the paint as you go along. And I think that would look really cute too. Then we're just going to hot glue down this candlestick holder to the back. So <laughs> I, I glued it to the side that I didn't like of the little topping here. And so I left the pretty side on the top. <laughs> And as you can see, I did distress the top. So this is just great for my decor. And then I actually ended up covering up the, the glue that was underneath with paint. I, I covered it up so you can't see the glue anymore. And I distressed over that too. So I made sure it was all pretty, but I love how it turned out. It looks so high end. I feel like I would buy that at a store if I wanted to use it with my decor or displaying something. And now we are going to make something to display on top of it. So this is more of that moss color. I love using this for spring. I really do, you guys, clearly. <laughs> but like I said, my favorite color is green and this color just speaks to me. So I'm using, a, so yeah, I'll be using it a lot probably this season. So this is some floral moss that I got from Dollar Tree. I actually just found it recently, so I don't know if this is a new one or not, but I really liked it. And I'm using gloves for this because for some reason when I work with crafting moss, like no matter where it is, if it's from Michaels or Dollar Tree, I tend to break out a little bit. I get some hives and things like that. So I have super sensitive skin. So if you're like me and have super sensitive skin, I recommend wearing gloves for something like this because the little teeny tiny pieces of this moss kind of gets in your skin and irritates it. 
that is only if you're like me but <laughs> that's just my experience and it's not just Dollar Tree's moss I've also had problems with ones from other craft stores so my skin's super sensitive and I'm not sure <laughs> why I'm, I'm unlucky there but anyway I just put in some pieces of this little bouquet that I got from Walmart and just kind of messed around with it until it was where I liked it so I think this was the final look here and then I just decided to I thought it'd be fun to maybe just dry brush the bottom of, and bottom and top of this and, and not necessarily do the whole thing. I thought it, it would look really unique and just kind of look like the bottom of it's kind of faded over time instead of the whole thing. So I don't know if that was just a look I wanted to test out. It's not, I'm sure this style is not going to be for everyone, but I'm just here to inspire and you can all certainly do your own thing, whatever your preference. And then I took this burlap, I guess, yeah, like a burlap looking ribbon from, from Dollar Tree. I love this. I love ribbon that looks like this. And I just decided to glue it down and then made sure it could fit all the way around, then cut off the excess and then secure it. So here is a little spring plant pot to display on this new, not tiered tray, but little, little tray that I just created. Or, sorry, riser. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want to watch more videos, more spring videos, check them out here on the left. Let's keep in touch on Instagram and my website, thecraftyquin.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a great weekend.